Will you also go away? When everybody was leaving, he, he said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. And they were all saying, hey, this, this is too tough. I'm leaving. He said, Peter, will you also? Peter said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Amen. You have to ask yourself the question. If you decide that it's not worth it, then you turn your back on God. Where are you going to go? Who are you going to go to? Jack? You know, Jack Daniels? Bud Weiser? They should put a new name on that can. Bud Dumber. Because when you drink it, you become dumb. I call all that stuff idiot oil. Because if you drink it, you turn into an idiot. It'll take the weakest, most frail individual and cause him to walk up to a guy that's as big as a grizzly bear and say, I can whip you. <laughs> as the guy grabs him, throws him on the ground, and it's over. <laughs> Alcohol will make you do something. It's like that old song that uh, Brad Pitt just said. said, I bet I can even make you put that lampshade on your head. It's true. You get people messed up enough Listen, I would rather be full of the Holy Ghost than full of alcohol. I would rather be full of the Holy Ghost than full of some type of drug. <clears throat> I've got to take pills every morning. I, I look at them, like cholesterol pill, a heart pill. Uh, but there's one pill I try my best to take every morning. It's necessary for my life. You want to know what it is? It's called the gospel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you take that pill, I promise you, your day's going to go better. Amen. You get up in the morning, even if you only got five minutes, turn that whatever you need to turn off and open your Bible and read a verse or two and just kind of live on the Word of God. Just let that be your lamp to your feet and the light to your path. Just, just make the Word of God the source of of all of your judgments because you're going to need His Word to help you in very difficult times. Listen, when faith turns to trust, this is one thing to have faith, it's another thing to trust. I'm looking at these two here. I don't know anybody that loves each other more than they do, except me and my wife. But, they have faith in each other. But because they have faith in each other, they have to trust each other. They're not always saying, where you been? What have you been doing? How come you didn't come home when I thought you were going to come home? Where you been? You know how many people go through that in their whole lives? And just fighting back because there is no trust. Now you can break trust. I promise you, you can break trust. But the one thing I've learned that when trust is broken, trust can be recovered if we can learn how to forgive. Forgiveness is a big deal. There's some things that you're never going to change, that's never going to work out like you want them to, and some things you just have to let them you say, well, how do I know if I forgive him? If you stop bringing it up. If you stop saying, well, you know, back 10 years ago when you did this, faith and trust says, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to hold that over your head for the rest of your days. Do you realize how many people in ministry that are out there that have fallen on their face cannot come back to God, will not come back to God, because there's a lot of folks out there that won't let them. You know I'm telling you the truth. Some people find out something about you, something bad about you that maybe you've done in some time in your life, and when they find out about it, they're going to hold that grudge against you until the day that they die. I remember Malcolm's been telling the story about some old guy that uh, his sister was mad at him, and she wouldn't 
trust him and because she thought when mama died that he got all the money and so she was bitter and she was angry and she was mad and, and all of a sudden they had to meet somewhere for some reason and she he walked up and he said you, it was a guy he said you haven't seen her have you he couldn't let it go he was in a wheelchair His unforgiveness crippled him. We need to let stuff go. When faith turns to trust, we will always say, and I want you to write this down or remember it if you possibly can, but when faith turns to trust, we will always say all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. Well, brother, you mean that storm I went through was God? Probably. But that battle I'm having, that's God? Yeah, he wants to see how you're going to respond. He wants to see how you're going to handle it. He's testing you, and that's okay. The trial of our faith being more precious than gold that's tried in the fire, it, it, it will bring forth wonderful results if we pass the test. But I learned a long time ago, if you don't pass the test, guess what? You get to take it again. Because God will keep giving you the test until you pass. Because why? He wants you to make it. That's his whole purpose for saving us. He wants us to make it. Amen. Amen. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, it says in Hebrews 10. For he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. James 2 and 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. James 2 and 20. I will that no, I, I will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. James 2 and 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Following Jesus, I'm getting close to the end, you all okay? Following Jesus is not for the faint of heart because it may cost you your life. It will definitely separate you from the world. It will cost you a few friends and may even separate you from certain parts of your family. Jesus told them who were following him to count the cost. He said, if you follow me, you must love me more than father, mother, wife, children, brother, sister, and even your own life, or you cannot be my disciple. That's the cross we must carry if we would be disciples. Yeah, I got a little gun when I love my I told her that before I married her. I said, honey, I love you, but I love God more than I love you. If you put on God, I'm not done. If you stop, I'm not going. I have a couple of friends. Sister Dunsmore was one. She kept following Jesus, kept following Jesus, kept following Jesus. Even though her husband wasn't saved, he just kept fighting back and wouldn't give up. And one day, all of a sudden, here comes Butch, giving his heart and life to Jesus. If she hadn't remained faithful, if she hadn't remained true, he wouldn't have got saved. Christine Tackett the same way. The lady that we used to sing with years ago. Her husband, he, he would never keep her from going to church. He let her go to church. He let his son Rusty play in our Christian band. And, but then her daughter kind of got astray. And, and But she just kept on praying. Kept on praying for Billy Joe Tackett. Just kept on praying. And then one day Billy Joe Tackett come and gave his heart and life to Jesus Christ. If she hadn't stayed faithful, if she hadn't stayed trusting God, he may have never gotten saved. And that's the case with thousands and thousands of people out there that have remained faithful to God. Peggy, you're sitting right here. You kept coming to church. You kept loving Jesus. You kept, you know, going home and being a good wife to your husband. And then all of a sudden, here comes Cliff. 
I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, he shows up at church. Next thing I know, we're singing the song, and he's got his hands in the air. He's screaming, praising the Lord. And then the next thing you know, God decides it's time for, you know, for him to go home. And you know, he went home. But we didn't have to worry about him. Even though he was in his 80s, he entered that city where there's no more sickness, sorrow, pain, or death. We don't have to worry about where he is. And one day, we will see him again. You know how much I worried about, and which is not a good thing to do. But how much I worried about Caleb, all my boys. I just think about their spiritual lives and thinking they need to come to Jesus. And the joy that was in my heart that day when Jackie was here, and he sat over there, and the Lord broke his heart. He began to cry, a puddle of tears. And Begin to say, I'm sorry to God and his dad and everybody else. And he's been following Jesus. Is he perfect? <laughs> he's my son. <laughs> because he doesn't have a perfect father, it's, it's almost impossible for him to be perfect. And yet, our perfection does not come by what we do. Our perfection comes by who we believe in. Amen. That's right, I've been made perfect by the blood of Jesus. Amen. When God looks at me, he looks at me through the blood of Jesus. That's right. And I don't have to worry. You know, the, the disciples had to get to a place of trust when they were in that boat when Jesus said, Hey, let's go over to the other side of the lake. Okay. They all got in the boat. They're going along. All of a sudden, a big old storm comes up. Jesus, he can sleep in the storm. If you're resting and you're trusting in God, you also can sleep in the storm. Amen. And the question they ask Jesus is one of those questions that you wonder, do you guys remember what you just seen? He healed this one and he fixed that one and he healed Peter's mom and he did all this stuff in that same chapter. I think it's Matthew. I do have it wrote down. Matthew chapter 8 verses 1 through 27. He, he did all these healings in that chapter, and then they get in the boat and they're crossing the lake. And Jesus is asleep in the boat, and the storm is raging, and they come up and say, Don't you care about us? <laughs> what? I mean, that would have been my first question out of Jesus' mouth, but it wasn't his. It didn't come out of his mouth. What are you asking me that for? They said, Don't you care about us? Don't you know we're perishing? They got Jesus in their boat and they think they're going to sink. Listen, if you got Jesus in your boat, you may have a big storm going on, but you ain't going to sink. Because there's going to come a time when the thing gets so bad that you're just crying out with all you got in your mind and then he's going to go, peace, be still. And you're going to go, Woo, yes. wow. Hallelujah. And then you're going to step back and you're going to go, what, what, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey his will? See, we're living for a seawalker, the blind man healer, a leper changing man from Galilee. That's an old song, you know, but it's, he's a soul savior. He's one of those guys that will reach into the most vile, wicked, sinful hearts pull out all the sin that they've ever committed. I don't care how old they are and he will forgive them for every bit of it, wash it away as though it never happened, cast it as far as the east is from the west. Never, 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 never to be remembered against them again. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> you say, right? you mean he really can do that? <laughs> He's the only one that can. That's right. I've been trying to forget my past. But the old devil, devil they'll bring it up every now and then. And you got to look at him and say, you know what? Jesus forgave me of that, so you might as well just shut up about that one. Just, just leave me alone about that one. Because God has washed it away. Amen. They had to learn to trust him in the storm. And oh, what results came when they did it. 
He said, peace be still. There was a great calm. And said, the scripture said immediately they were across the lake. They didn't have Johnson, Evan Root, Mercury. He said, what are you talking about? Well, Evan Root makes a boat motor. Mercury makes a boat motor. Johnson makes a boat motor. They didn't have one. But it said immediately they were at the other side. I don't know whether he conned that storm and then went and blew him across the lake. I don't know. Well, it said immediately they were on the other side. What a powerful savior we have. What a wonderful man of God. Well, I mean, you, you stop and think about how wonderful, how glorious, how magnificent our Savior is. How, how glorious he is to be seen. In fact, we have seen God in the face of Jesus Christ, the scripture says. Yes. Amen. I'm grateful. Amen. <clears throat> I don't know if I can sing this or not, but I'm going to try. <clears throat> And then I'm going to close. You know, this song came to me while I was preparing this, just trying to... Well, I'm just going to do it, okay? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. something that I do. We were Caleb and I were talking about last night how we learned some things through the years. He learned to play the drums years ago. But he didn't stop there. He learned to play the bass guitar and then he learned to play the guitar. Well, I played the bass a little bit, played the guitar a little bit, and played the piano a little bit. I would love to tell Thank you. 
Every day he comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand his word of love. I'll never know just why. He came to save me. Till someday when I see his face This is probably one of the hardest times of the year for Mom Lois, and I know she's probably watching this morning. I love you, honey. But her heart's desire every summer is to come stay at mine and Barb's house for just as long as we'll let her. And we've never told her how long she could stay or when she had to leave because she's always a welcome guest in our home. It's been a hard time for a lot of you. Sister Peggy was talking about I just trying to stay safe, and I, it's just the first time to be back in church this morning. I'm so happy to see her. And Cindy, she came a couple weeks ago when I was here. And she's back. She got her mask on, and I don't have an issue with that. I just, you know, be safe as you possibly can. I don't want anybody to be sick. I want everybody to be well. And I'm going to speak that over you today. Be well in Jesus' name. Amen. No matter what may come, no matter who may try to infect you or whatever, you be well in Jesus' name. I love the Lord today. I'm grateful for His Word. 
I'm grateful for the songs that God gave us to do this morning. And I pray that you've been blessed for watching us by Facebook. I pray that you've been encouraged and strengthened and that you understand and know that there's a church out here that's trying to preach the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and to share it with as many people as we possibly can. Sin is running rampant. But the Bible said when sin abounds, grace does much more abound. And I'm grateful to the Lord. Father, we love you today. Thank you for what you've given us today. I pray that as we leave this place, we'll leave here with our hearts full, our minds clear. Father, and our vision, dear Lord, is to see you glorified in all the earth. And we'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing me something, Caleb. God bless all of you. You have a great day in the Lord. We're going to close out our service with this song. have reached out, wept our tears away, stepped in and saved the day. Once again, I say amen, and it still rains. And as the thunder rolls, I barely hear you whisper through the rain.
Father, we praise you and we thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name.